Hello everyone, welcome back to our YouTube channel. This is Larry Slim. Today I'm going to show you water, P5 science. Okay, what are the concepts and what are the keywords that you need to know for this topic? Let's take a look. Okay, remember at I Love Learning, we teach science in a very precise, very concise way so that you know exactly what are the keywords needed in order to answer the, the questions that you are asked in your test paper. Okay, so what are the keywords that you need? The state of water depends on its surrounding temperature. So what state of water will, uh, will depend on uh, how cold or how hot the surrounding is? So in order to be solid, it will need to be very, very cold. Okay, so the particles are basically all lumped up together in one they don't really have energy to move so you can imagine like they are human beings they are very very cold they are all lumped up together so they are solid okay so what is the melting temperature in order for them to move around to start moving to have energy if you imagine human beings again you want to start moving instead of shivering over there you need some energy you need some warmth right so this will be the melting point whereby they move and they start taking the shape of the container they are liquid okay so they gain heat from the surrounding the melting point Point is always zero even when they are ice they are melting at the side the water might be a, a higher temperature but the ice even if it's melting itself it is still at zero degrees Celsius okay so impurities like salt water can lower the melting point of ice therefore there will be some test questions that asks you uh, uh, why is it that when you make ice cream for example you need to add ice to the salt uh, add Add salt to the eyes, okay? Add salt to the eyes to decrease the, uh, the temperature of the eyes so that it can actually freeze up the milk that you have to make the ice cream, okay? So these are just common questions. You will see some questions later we'll teach you. So liquid, how does it look like? Liquid will be, they take the shape of the container, they have energy, they're moving already, okay? So they are not as packed as ice anymore. So their boiling point is 100 degrees Celsius. 100 degrees Celsius meaning they gather a lot, a lot of energy to overcome their water state and fly out to evaporate. Okay. So temperature of boiling water remains at 100 degrees Celsius until all the water has boiled. So it will be 100, 100, 100, 100 until they goes up, they rise up, right? So rise up as steam, rise up as water vapor. Impurities can increase the boiling point of water meaning the dirtier the water or the more chemicals that you add onto the water, it will take a higher temperature for it to boil, okay? Gas. So how does gas look like? Gas takes the, con the shape of the container as indefinite shape, indefinite volume. So it will just, whatever is the container, the gas is just all around. So when does water take the uh, state of gas? It will be water vapor or even steam. But remember, a lot of children thought what they see that's plumbing out of the, the, the boiling kettle is actually steam. No, whatever you can see are water droplets. Steam and water vapor cannot be seen. Okay, so why are there water droplets that you see? Because the steam is so hot, the moment it comes out, the surrounding is colder. The moment the steam touches the cool surface of the surrounding, it condenses into water droplets. That is why you can see them. Okay, so remember that steam and water vapor cannot be seen. What you see plummeting out from the kettle is actually water droplets already. They are condensed. Okay, so this is a, a common uh, misconception that children have. What are the other processes that you need to know for this topic? You need to know this process called condensation. Children, a lot of times, they can't spell this right. So please cut this up so that you can know how to spell this. is con, C-O-N, den, D-E-N, say, S-A, shen, T-I-O-N. Cut it up so that it's easier for yourself to spell it right. Okay, so condensation is actually a state of becoming from gaseous state and you know, moving around a lot of energy and then you slowly you lose heat and then you become water so how do you lose heat so you imagine so when water is evaporated they are gaseous state right so they have a lot of energy but the moment they touch a cool surface oh they lose energy and they become slower in movement so they become liquid okay so you imagine these particles as little human beings the moment you're cold you move a little bit less Okay, so it can occur at any temperature. Okay, basically, if the water vapor touches the cooler surface, it will lose energy and condense. So it's basically any temperature that is a bit cooler. 
so ev evaporation will be from liquid okay so you are you are you are you are moving around with a little bit of energy but the, you evaporate because you gain energy and you woo wow you have energy you fly out like gas okay so you become the water vapor state you have a lot of energy so that's evaporation is gaining heat you'll be surprised in the water question there is a lot of usage of the heat keyword so condensation is lose heat evaporation is gain heat okay heat in this case is actually referred to as an a form of energy for the water okay so again it can occur at any temperature it gains heat from the surrounding so even if you just have a, a pile or a pool of water uh, on the floor it will evaporate because the surrounding gain heat from the surrounding they gain the energy from the surrounding so the hotter it is the more water they the more energy they gain the faster the rate of evaporation which i'll touch on later Okay, so the rate of evaporation is affected by four factors. You need to memorize all these four. Sometimes the exam questions will only ask you for three. Some schools only teach three, but there's actually four altogether. So you, it is good information for you to know them. So what is the area of exposed surface area? Okay, uh, the area of exposed surface area, there's two areas <laughs> used in front and below uh, and in front. Because... You can imagine them as particles, the bigger the faster, as in the bigger the area of surface area exposed, the faster the rate evaporation. What do I mean? Okay, let's just use this graphic. Imagine the water uh the uh, the water droplets are all clumped together. It's quite difficult for them to escape. So imagine in a room of people all clumped together, if you want to go through a narrow door, it is quite difficult. You need to take turns, it's slower. But if you spread everybody out and you have a lot of more exit doors, everybody can run out at the same time. So therefore, if you open up your clothes in order to dry it, you don't dry the clothes in a lump, you, you spread it out flat, the water droplets, uh, the, the, the evaporation will be faster. Okay, so you imagine it as human beings trying to escape, right? So they are little cute particles instead. The presence of wind, the stronger, the faster. Why is that so? Because again, you imagine they want to escape. So if they, every time they want to escape, the, the, the second layer wants to escape, the first layer is still there. There is no way the second layer can escape. So you imagine you get rid of the first layer, the second layer can escape. Which is why, how do you get rid of the first layer then? Presence of wind. We have to blow these particles away or blow these little human beings away so that the second level can escape. So you imagine it this way, okay? Surrounding temperature, again, just now I mentioned, if you have heat, it's gaining heat, evaporation will increase, isn't it? So the more, the higher the temperature, the higher the amount of heat energy available for the water vapor, for the water uh, droplets to gather, and then they will fly out even faster. So the higher the temperature, the higher, the faster the rate of evaporation. Humidity. Uh, it is actually not in the syllabus, but some schools still teach it. Okay, so it is good information for you. Humidity level is the uh, the the rate, okay, the amount of what um, water vapor in the air. So for example, a humid day will be when it's very cloudy. A rainy day, uh, humid, uh, rainy day, cloudy day, it will result in a lower evaporation. It will feel hotter for all of us when it's very humid because there's a high water vapor content in the air. And because of that, the evaporation of our sweat cannot take place because imagine there's a lot of uh, vapor stuck all, all over. Our water from our skin cannot rise up. It cannot evaporate because evaporation of sweat takes heat away from our body. Right? They gain heat from our body, the water vapor, the water droplets gain heat from our body in order to rise up, to evaporate, right? But because there is so much particles, okay, let me show you. Because there is so much particles all around. Oops. Okay, this one. Because there's so much, so imagine these are the air particles, okay, it's blocking the evaporation from the, uh, let's say your sweat, okay? So because it's blocking, this sweat will not be able to take away heat from your body and therefore making you cool. Therefore, on a humid day where there's a lot of water vapor uh, in the air, evaporation decrease, you will feel warmer. But if there is less of this, okay, so if there is less of this water vapor in the air, there will be more evaporation taking place. Therefore, you will be able to feel cooler because the sweat, as it evaporates, it takes heat away from your body. Okay, so you imagine it this way. Again, same thing is at like the entrance. Uh, if there is more entrance, more exit point, then there is more people who can escape, correct? Okay, 
So what else do you need to know in the water chapter? You need to know the water cycle. Okay, where does the water cycle start from? There is no start point, there is no end point because it's a cycle, right? Okay, but well, uh, we will look at it from this way. First, let's look at precipitation first. Precipitation is any kind of um, rainfall, you can say snowfall is also a form of precipitation. Hail is also a form of precipitation. Anything that drops from the sky, generally, right? In a form of water in different states, okay? Hail will be solid state and uh, snow will be solid state and uh, rain will be liquid state. Okay, so precipitation drops down and then there will be surface runoff. Sometimes there is underground surface runoff as well because uh, they will gather all the way down into the soil, into the drain and it runs off. And then they will gather, this is called accumulation in the sea. It doesn't have to be sea, it can be drain as well, it can be lake, it can be pond, it can be anything. Okay, even reservoir. Okay, uh, so and then what happens when there's accumulation, so they will continue to gain heat and then they will rise up again. That's why it's called a cycle. Okay, so they will rise up, they will go into evaporation. Meanwhile, some of the water will be used by human beings, by animals, by, by anything uh, used as a form of energy. And some of them will evaporate back and then they will condense upon touching the cold surface of the condensation nuclei in the sky because it's cooler up there. Right in the sky is much cooler, so they will touch all this condensation nuclei. Nuclei, condensation nuclei can be anything, can be pollution, can be just uh, air particles. It can be anything as long as it's cooler. They will touch and then they will condense. They will form water droplets. They will clump together. They are all in the sky still, and when they get heavy enough, they will fall back down as precipitation. So what's at this side? This side, of course, there's condensation as well. Okay. So another part of condensation, another part of the water vapor that comes, it doesn't come from precipitation, it doesn't come from accumulation, it comes from the trees. Okay. The trees transpire and they let out water vapor. Okay. And this contributes to the water cycle as well. Okay, so that's all you need to know for the water chapter for P5 science. Let me show you some uh, exam questions so you will know how to answer some questions. Okay, so now we are looking at some of these questions over here. David set up an experiment as shown below. He placed leads at different temperatures on top of each beaker. So you notice that, okay, these leads are like basically covers. So this lead is slightly cooler. This lid is slightly higher temperature, 60 degrees Celsius. So you can imagine this one is placed in the fridge. This one is uh, maybe placed over the fire. Both water is at 80 degrees Celsius. This is setup X. This is setup Y. Okay. So the water is actually quite hot. When the water is quite hot, uh, water vapor, water droplets will actually gain energy. They will evaporate. They will, they will, they will uh, rise up even faster. Remember, heat actually increases the rate of evaporation. This is something that you learned just now. So all these are already in your mind as you are reading this. So this is cooler. So when the water vapor touches the cool surface, what happens? They will condense, right? So after 10 minutes, David noticed water droplets forming on the underside of both leads. That means there's water droplets here and water droplets here. So based on his observation, he drew the water droplets formed on the underside of the lead in setup Y. But he didn't draw anything for x, okay? So, <clears throat> now the question comes. State if the number of water droplets formed on the underside of the lid in setup x over here will be more than this or less than this or the same amount or as this, okay? On the underside of the lid in setup y. So, what is your answer? Straight away, you know the colder it is, the faster you will be able to gain energy from the water vapor over here, therefore increasing the rate of condensation here, right? So, therefore, there will be more water droplets, definitely. So, this answer is more, right? More than over here because this is hot, right? So, this is cooler. It takes away more energy from them. It takes away more energy from more particles. Therefore, there will be more liquid, right? Slowing down. Imagine, ooh, we are released. And then they touch cold. Ooh, so cold. And then they slow down. They become liquid. So, imagine it that way. So, how do you explain the answer then? Very simple. So, the lead in setup X is colder than the lead in setup Y. So, this part, you need to have the keyword over there. It is colder. So the water vapor in the beaker loses more heat, okay? So this is another keyword, it loses more heat. So remember just now I said in water question, you actually need to use the word heat a lot. So you need to take note of that. 
to the underside of the lid upon touching. So this touching the cooler surface is again another keyword because the touching of the cooler surface explains the condensation. So do you then need to talk about the rate of condensation? Of course, you need to say that therefore it increases the rate of condensation. If you want to be a little bit more uh, long-winded, therefore increasing the rate of condensation, therefore there is more water droplets under the lid, etc. X. Okay, now let's go on to the next question. Very, very similar question as you can see. Very, very common format of asking. A group of students perform an experiment to obtain pure water from seawater by using the setup as shown in the diagram below. Okay, so why is it that they can obtain pure water from seawater from condensation or evaporation? Because only water can evaporate and only water condenses, okay? So, uh, of course, but if uh, condensation, uh, it happens on the uh, condensation nuclei, for example, pollutants in the sky, so there is a very bad pollutants in the sky, then this water vapor will rise up and connect to this condensation nuclei. They are actually pollution. They will increase the acidity of the water as it drops down, therefore forming acid rain. Okay, this will be a P6 topic already. So you will read this, uh, you, will, you will study this in the following year. Okay, so now let's get back to the question. So there is plastic sheet and then there is ice cubes that is forming down over here. So this is the 3000 milliliters of water, sea water and glass tank and this is the beaker. So they are telling you after two hours, 500 milliliters of pure water was found in the beaker. How did that happen? Is it because there is holes in the cup or something leap inside or what? Where did this water come from? Okay, so you have learned about the water cycle. So what happens is this is like a little mini water cycle on display over here. What happens is this water over here will rise up. They evaporate, correct? So once they evaporate, what happens? They will touch the cool surface. Remember, when there's gas, there's a lot of energy. They will gain a lot of energy. They will rise up. Yay! But the moment they touch the cool surface, they will, ooh, cold. And then they will slow down and then they will become water droplets. And as they gather more and more and more, they become heavy. They will drop down into the beaker due to this gravity over here. They will pull it down, correct? And then they will all drop. Because of the anger, they will all drop into the beaker. So that's how pure water is obtained. So how do you put it down in simple English? Then it will be like this. <coughs> the molecules in the seawater gain energy. Okay, so over here you can say gain heat as well if you would like to. There will be one keyword, okay, and evaporated. So this is just to explain how did the water vapor come from. So when the water vapor comes to contact with the cooler surface, remember this keyword as well. Very important, this explains how condensation happens, right? So cooler surface, very, very important keyword, and they lost heat and condensed. So the water vapor will touch the cool surface and then it loses heat and then it will condense up into water droplets. So when the water droplets became too heavy, they drop into the beaker. So that's the four keywords that you will need all together. So this is one, this is two, this is three, and this is four. Oh, five, sorry, okay? So um, so lost heat and condense, <coughs> very, very important. So you need to see all these keywords. It must be inside your answer so that you can explain the question well, right? So what was the purpose of placing ice cubes on the plastic sheet? Okay, so because you need a cooler surface, therefore the ice cubes is to provide the cool surface, right? So how do you explain that in simple English? It's like this. So it is to cool down the plastic sheet so that condensation can take place, that's all. So what is the keyword over here? It will be to cool the plastic sheet so that condensation can take place. Now at the same time, another group of students did a similar experiment with the same amount of seawater and ice cubes. However, they replaced the beaker with a large basin. So instead of a small narrow beaker, they now place a large basin to collect water as shown in the diagram below. So after two hours, only 200 milliliters of pure water was found. So these students, uh, they were greedy. They wanted to collect more water, so they had bigger basin. But it actually gave them less water in the basin instead. What happened? Remember, the rate of evaporation is affected by four factors. Okay, so this seawater is actually evaporating. If you want the seawater to evaporate, you want this whole glass tank to have more water vapor. What should you do? 
the four rates the four factors that affects the rate of evaporation is that the bigger the surface area the faster the evaporation right so the faster the evaporation the more water vapor there will be the more condensation there will be but now there is a smaller exposed surface area of the sea water it's only left with this bit compared to this much just now okay so this small bit will affect the rate of evaporation so why is the amount less so it will be because the surface area of the exposed <clears throat> the surface area of the seawater is smaller due to the big basin taking up a huge area and hence the rate of evaporation is slower for that two hours so what must you say the exposed surface area it will be better if you have the word exposed over here the exposed surface area of the seawater is smaller due to the big basin okay taking up a bigger space and hence the rate of evaporation is slower so for one mark these two keywords will be enough right <clears throat> okay <clears throat> another question that shows the water cycle and the drying of the wet t-shirt okay so this water cycle is just to re uh, tap on the memory a little bit give you a little bit of assistance to let you know okay this topic is the water cycle topic right so name the process that is found in both the water cycle and the drying of the wet t-shirt remember what's the meaning of process process like evaporation condensation melting or uh, solid uh, uh, solidifying so these are the processes so in this case what is the process that is found in both the water cycle and the drying of the wet t-shirt the drying of the wet t-shirt will definitely be evaporation it cannot be condensation condensation causes wetness isn't it? it causes water droplets so this one is drying it has to be evaporation so the pupa commented that the water from the wet t-shirt will eventually fall as rain explain why so basically what they are asking you is to explain the entire water cycle why is that so because the water from the t-shirt will evaporate and then they will reach a cool surface in the sky and then they will condense and form clouds and then they will when the clouds are too heavy they will fall as rain that's how you explain the whole sequence right okay so let's see what are the keywords that we need to include over here after the water from the wet t-shirt so you need all these keywords evaporates into water vapor the water vapor will rise okay so this one is important evaporation water vapor will rise and eventually condense another process keyword and form clouds when the clouds are too heavy okay the weight will cause it to fall as rain so these are the keywords that you will need the two processes evaporation condensation the water vapor will rise and then how it drops so that's how you completely un answer this rain part okay <clears throat> so let's look at the last question over here something a little bit different melvin had two identical trays okay this is a tray you can imagine it's an iron rod it looks like an iron rod but actually maybe because from the side view it is actually a tray so he placed tray P in the freezer. So this is extremely cold. P is cold for a few hours before setting up the experiment below. So this one doesn't say anything. So we assume it's room temperature. <clears throat> so there is heat here. That means this seawater is being boiled. Okay. So as this is being boiled, what happens to the water? So straight away in your mind, you know when this is being boiled, there will be evaporation because they will gain heat and then they will fly out. Woo! and then what happens when they touch the cold surface over here they will condense oh cold and then they will become water and then they will drip down into this beaker a therefore there's more water here and then there is less over here because it's not that cold less condensation okay and then there's less water here voila you got the answer already but of course let's see what are they actually asking for so these are the thought process that you have in your mind as you see questions okay all this will help you to answer whatever comes next <clears throat> so Melvin poured some seawater into a flask <clears throat> and okay or explaining over here and attached the tea tube to it okay so this is the tea tube over here he then placed the two trays P and Q at equal distances at the ends of the tea tube over here all right so he heated the seawater until it came to a boil so this became boiling 
after a few minutes he observed that some water is collected in both beakers A and B X what I've explained right so this is whatever I've explained written over here so based on the experiment state the process happening on trays P and Q so what exactly is the process happening there over here this will be evaporation remember just now I said over here will be condensation so what is the process remember process means condensation evaporation solidification melting these are the process explain why there was more water collected in beaker a than in beaker b so just now i already explained to you so let's see how would you write it in simple english with the keywords inside of course okay so tray p was a cooler surface than tray a so again the word cool very very important in your answer then tray q so the warm water vapor coming out from the tea tray will lose heat remember all of these keywords i mentioned just now in water questions you need to have loose heat gain heat cooler will explain the condensation so the rate of condensation over here at p becomes faster okay so rate of condensation another keyword is faster thus having more water droplets because there's more condensation there's more water droplets that's how you explain see similar very very similar keywords keeps popping out so these are the basic keywords you need to know after some time Melvin observed that the amount of water in each beaker did not increase as quickly as before anymore oh why why did the rate of condensation stop increasing over here or rather it, it stopped having more here than here what is the reason very simple because tray P is losing or rather is gaining heat is losing the coolness is gaining heat because as it gets heat up by the water droplets over here that is actually cold the water vapor that is actually hot sorry the water vapor coming out from here is actually hot it will slowly uh, allow this tray P to gain a lot of heat isn't it so therefore as the heat as the tray gains heat there will be less condensation so how would you explain it over here it will be that the trays gain heat from the water warm water vapor and the temperature difference between the trays and the water vapor will decrease therefore the rate of condensation decrease and therefore less water drop down what are the keywords again gain heat over here definitely gain heat lose heat is a keyword for water chapter okay so the warm water vapor and the temperature difference from the trays and the water vapor will decrease okay so the temperature difference is one keyword over here you can also say the temperature difference uh, there will be lower temperature difference or rather the temperature will balance out up to you doesn't matter okay basically what you need to say the keyword is gain heat right so the rate of condensation will decrease so this is the two keywords that you need this is just an explanation over here you can write it anyhow that you like it whether the temperature became balanced or uh, there is no more difference in temperature up to you so gain heat trace gain heat the rate of condensation will decrease and then you use something in between to answer to explain this will be the complete answer for this question all right I hope you learned a lot from this chapter from my explanation there's recurring keywords that you need to know in science is always these keywords that you need to put into your answer in order to score the whole point no need to be long, too long-winded keywords are the most important okay thank you so much for tuning in please subscribe to our youtube channel for more videos coming up see you bye bye